Hello aspirants, I hope you are doing great. This is the final video of three part solution series on UPSC Combined Geoscientist 2022 prelims question paper. Today we will cover questions from stratigraphy, economic geology and hydrology. So without any further ado, let's get started. The first set of questions are from stratigraphy section and the first question is which one of the following shows the correct arrangement of the epochs that is series in order of decreasing age in the standard geological time scale okay so if you refer to the geological time scale the mississippian is a part of lower carboniferous which ranges from 358.9 uh, to 323.2 million years um, Senonian uh, is uh, the final part of the Cretaceous epoch ranging from 88.5 to 65 million years the Eocene epoch ranges from 54 to uh, 33.7 million years ago and the uh, Pliocene <coughs> Pliocene ranges from uh, 5.33 million years to 5, uh, 2.58 million years ago. So the current sequence is represented by option A and therefore it is the right answer. The next question, which one of the following is a chrono chronostratigraphic unit? Formation, system, member, epoch. Okay, so chronostratigraphic units can be divided as uh, um, Eonothem, for example, Phanerozoic, uh, then comes the Erathem, for example, Paleozoic, then comes the system, for example, Ordovician, and then the system is divided into numbers of series, for example, Upper Ordovician, and so on. And then the smallest division is the stage. Hence, option B is the right answer. Formation and members are uh, lithostratigraphic units, and epoch is a geochronological unit. As you can refer to the uh, this uh, chart given in the uh, given to the right of the answer. <clears throat> okay, so next question is uh, the line joining the point of equal thickness of a particular stratigraphic unit on different parts of a sedimentary basin is known as what? Iso height, iso nape, iso bath, iso pack. So iso height is a line joining uh, line on a map connecting points having same amount of rainfall in a given period. Iso nape is a line on a map connecting points that have the same average percentage of cloudiness. Iso bath is an imaginary line or a line on a map or chart that connects all points having the same depth below uh, water surface as of uh, ocean, sea or lake. The statement in the question uh, correctly explains isopack. So option D will be the right answer. The next question asks the peninsular niches are typically what? Granite niche, biotite niche, uh, garnet sillimanite niche or magmatitic niches. So, uh, to uh, firstly, the term peninsular niche was first coined by uh, W. F. Smith, and they are made up of polyphase migmatites, niches, and granites ranging in composition from granodiorite to tonalite. Migmatization of the pre existing metasedimentary and metaigneous rocks are considered the contributors to formation of this composite niches. Hence, option D will be the right answer here. Next question asks uh, Simoga cyst belt constitutes a part of which of the following area? Uh, Dharwar cratonic area, Singbhum cratonic area, Aravalli cratonic area, or Central India tectonic zone? Uh, the peninsular knees occupy the largest tract of uh, western Dharwar craton uh, um, into two uh, distinct belts. They are Baba Buddha and Western Ghat Simoga belt and the Chitradurga Gadak belt. Hence, Simoga cyst belt constitutes a part of Dharwar cratonic area. So, option A is the right answer. Ajabgarh uh, group belongs to which of the following? Chitradurga Greenstone Belt, Singbhum Siorjon Belt, North Delhi Fold Belt, Eastern Ghats Mobile Belt. The Delhi Supergroup is divided into Rayalo, Alwar and Ajabgarh group. Uh, the Ajabgarh group lies unconformly over, over the Alwar group. So, option C is the right answer. And the next question asks, which one of the follow, uh, following formations contain some of the richest manganese deposits of India? So as you can see from the uh, table to the right, the Mansur formation of saucer group contains three distinct layers of manganese overbodies uh, and, uh, uh, and it is one of the richest deposits of India. Hence, option A, Mansur formation is the right answer. <coughs> The next question asks, which one of the following groups comprises Bisley rhyolites? 
ओके सो द नंदगांव ग्रुप ऑफ डोंगरगढ़ सुपर ग्रुप कंटेन सेवरल इंट्रूजन एंड बिजरी लाइलाइट इज द ओल्डेस्ट ऑफ देम हेन्स ऑप्शन बी विल बी द राइट आंसर The Mahakasal next question is the Mahakasal group belongs to which of the following Arabali Delhi Mobile Belt, Eastern Ghat Mobile Belt, Central Indian Tectonic Zone, and Kadab Basin. Now I guess this is uh, a new one for many students. So Central Indian Tectonic Zone, which is bordered by Son Narmada North Fault in the north and Son Narmada South Fault in the south, is a major crustal and tectonic feature in Peninsular India. It contains a number of super super crustal belts, including Mahakasal. you can see from the uh, the stratigraphic um, divisions of the mahakasal group in the table to the right hence option c will be the right answer the next question is which one of the following formation of bindhyan supergroup contains well preserved stromatolites kenjua porcelanite um, lower kaimur sandstone lower reva sandstone The distribution of stromatolite is well well observed in the Fon limestone of the Kenjua formation of Semri group, which belongs to the lower Vindhyan. Uh, three forms: uh, Conophyton garganicus, Collinella columnaris, and Collinia clappi are recorded from this horizon. Hence, option A is the right answer. Kenjua formation. Next question asked: Which one of the following stratigraphic units uh, was deposited in a four land basin? Bag group, Damura group, Siwali group, Super group. Uh, Utatur group. As you may have known, a foreland basin is a structural basin that develops adjacent and parallel to a mountain belt. The Himalayan foreland basin has been divided into different rock units in different parts of the basin. Among them, the Subatu Kohat formation is the earliest foreland basin field deposited under a salomarine environment. The Daksai Dharmasala formation is the earliest. continental deposit and the siwali group that is the thickest record of the himalayan detritus uh, these deposits are also continental and uh, they are they largely reflect deposition under flood plain meandering river and braided river environment so option c is the right answer that is siwali super group the correct stratigraphic order of siwali super group is what uh, as you can see Uh, from the table to the right side the correct order of uh, siwalik group is d that is uh, kamlial chinji nagri then dhokpatan tatrut pinjor and lastly the boulder con conglomerate so option d will be the right answer uh, the next set of questions are from economic geology section the first question is which one of the following uh, statement regarding strata bound deposit is not correct strata bound deposits can be discordant strata bound de deposits are restricted to a particular part of the stratigraphical column all stratiform or ore deposits are strata bound all strata bound deposits are stratiform we have to uh, find out which one is not correct so first let's know what's the stratiform and strata strata bound deposits are the term stratiform is used to describe ore bodies that are developed in two dimensions parallel to bedding plane with limited development perpendicular to the bedding Uh, they are mostly parallel uh, on the other hand the strata bound uh, deposits are uh, ore bodies that are either concordant or discordant but are strictly restricted to a specific stratigraphic interval the essential difference between these two types is that the stratigraphic stratiform implies economic mineralization over the full stratigraphic thickness of one or more strata but the strata bound implies occurrence of ore within one or more strata but volumes of which are mineralized may be separated or may not be extended throughout the stratigraphic thickness so stratiform deposits are always strata bound although the reverse is not true hence option d will be the right answer next question asks uh, consider the following statements regarding wall rock alternation the statement one states the transformation of k feldspar to sericite is a common alteration process in hydrothermal system uh, statement two says uh, hydration is the process of removal of molecular water from a fluid into the mineral during alteration okay so sericite is a common alteration mineral of orthoclase or uh, plagioclase feldspar in areas that have been subjected to hydrothermal alteration typically associated with copper tin or other hydrothermal or de ore deposits as you can see from the reaction uh, uh, reaction equation it represents a process of hydrolysis so statement uh, one is true 
hydration results in the um, addition of water molecule to a mineral structure but without accompanying any dislocation that that occurs in the hydrolysis process in short there is no reaction between water and mineral rather water is simply added to the structure of the mineral so statement 2 is correct but it is unrelated to statement 1 hence option c is the right answer I'm sorry, option B is the right answer. That is, both statement 1 and 2 are true, but the statement 2 is not the correct explanation of statement 1. Which one of the following uh, terms may be used to refer uh, to a wallastonite and teen rich rock um, comprising hydrothermal alteration assemblage of quartz, muscovite, topaz, fluorite, and tourmaline? Okay, so grisons are usually hydrothermally altered rocks grading from coarse crystalline granite, commonly voggy with myrolytic my cavities. These are quartz and muscovite rich rocks which may be locally rich in topaz, tourmaline, cassiterite, wolframite, molybdenite and other sulphide minerals and other uh, accessory minerals. Uh, tactite or scan are um, similarly used terms which is a calcite silicate rock formed by contact metasomatism and they are rich in cal calcium garnet, calcium iron rich pyroxene, vesuvianite, epidote uh, and scapolite. So option C that is grisen will be the right answer. Okay, the question is asking here to match the host rocks in list 1 with the nature of the ore bodies they contain in list 2. As you may know, most pegmatites are thought to uh, form from the last uh, fluid fraction of a large crystallizing magma body. This residual fluid is highly enriched in volatiles and trace elements such as lithium, beryllium, boron, fluorine, uh, tin, titanium, and rare earth elements, uranium. So option A matches with option 1 from list 2. Uh, Ore deposits of chromite uh, form, uh, form as early magmatic differentiates and occur in layered formation that can be hundreds of kilometers long and a few meter thick. Uh, so option C matches with option 2 from list 2. Now carbonatites sometimes contain rare earth uh, ore minerals, uh, par parasite and monazite, the niobium ore mineral pyro uh, pyrochlor etc. So option B matches with op uh, option 4 from list 2. And again, the massive net textured, um, the massive net textured and disseminated sulphide ore, ore are commonly present in comatite hosted nickel sulphide deposits. Sulphides ore frequently comprise pyrotite, petlantite, uh, pyrite, chalcopyrite, etc. So option D matches with uh, option three from list two. Hence, option C is the right answer. Next question is saying, uh, consider the following statements regarding phosphorite deposits. Phosphorites often show a uh, texture of nodular pil uh, pilloidal aggregates of uh, fine-grained apatite. Then the next uh, statement says, during phosphorite formation, apatite never grows diagenetically in the sediment column. Which of the following are correct? So, in general, phosphatic sedimentary rocks are commonly accompanied by uh, or interpreted with shales, charts, limestone, dolomite and sometimes sandstone. Uh, these layers contain the same textures and structure as fine grained limestones and um, may, may represent a digenetic uh, replacement of uh, carbonate mineral by phosphate. Phosphorites can be composed of pelloids, oids, fossils and glass that are made up of apatite. Hence, statement 1 is correct while the statement 2 is incorrect. So, option B will be the right answer. That is only one is correct <clears throat> the question is asking here to match the elements with their respective geochemical classification as per their geochemical affinity as you may know atmophile elements are those who are preferred in the gaseous phase for example hydrogen helium and nitrogen and noble gases uh, then the lithophile elements have affinity for silicate phases like alkalis alkali earth metals halogens etc lanthanides etc um, then the chalcophile elements have affinity for a um, sulphide liquid phase and they include elements such as copper, zinc and so on. Siderophile elements have an affinity for metallic liquid phase. For example, they are iron, co cobalt, nickel, platinum group of elements etc. Hence option B matches suitably and is the right answer. 
uh, which one of the following deposit types is uh, unlikely to be preserved due to rapid in terms of geological time scale erosion after its formation uh, orogenic cold hydrothermal tungsten uh, peridotite hosted chromatite and um, epithermal deposits of uh, gold and silver <coughs> Okay, so for erosion to be rapid, the deposit has to be exposed to various weathering agents. Um, epithermal deposits are susceptible to erosion owing to their shallow emplacement depth of only 1 to 2 km. This result uh, results in the observation that most epithermal deposits worldwide are, are generally cenozoic in age. So, D is the right answer. Consider the following statements regarding oxidation of sulphide deposits. Statement 1 says Gosans are rich in chalcopyrite. Statement 2 says Gosans are regularly sought by mineral, mineral prospectors. Which one of the following is correct uh, with respect to the above statements? Okay, so uh, Gosan is intensely oxidized, weathered, or decomposed rock. Usually, the upper uh, up, um, upper and the exposed part of an uh, ore deposit or mineral vein. In the uh, classic uh, Gosan or iron cap, all the min all all that remains is the iron oxide and quartz, often in the form of box works. Um, in other cases, quartz and iron oxides, limonite, goethite, etc., can exist as pseudomorphs, replacing the pyrite and pi primary ore minerals. So, statement one is false. That uh, says that quotients are rich in chalcopyrite. Um, after statement two, uh, uh, we can observe that in the 19th and 20th century, quotients were um, important guide to uh, guides to buried ore deposits. An experienced experienced pro prospector could read the clues in the structure of the Gosan to determine the type of mineralization likely to be found below this iron cap. Uh, that is a Gosan. So statement 2 is correct. Hence, option D is the right answer. Next question says, if oil weight cells are in contact with water weight sandstones, the water tends to uh, move from sandstone pore uh, into cell pore. Uh, and displaces the oil there therefrom into adjacent sandstone. In this process, which one of the following fluids, fluid properties and natural forces has no bearing? Okay, so capillarity and surface tensions are related as capillary pressure is given by 2 sigma cos theta by rho gr. Now, wettability is the preference of a solid surface to be in contact with one fluid rather than the other. The balance of forces, uh, the surface tensions, and uh, these things control the wettability between the solid and the fluids and the interfacial tension between the fluids. As surface tension influences wettability, so is the capillarity. So A and B are B have bearing on the process. Uh, for option C, the mobility of oil and water will be dependent on how the densities of the two fluids are different. Hence, relative density also has a role to play here. Here, gravity has no impact. So, option D is the right answer, that is gravity. Which one of the following is not a structural trap, uh, trap for uh, oil and gas deposits? Okay, so mostly structural traps include anticlinal traps, fault related traps, which include also terraces, uh, salt domes, but up deep sand wedge is not a structural trap. Hence, option D is the right answer. Uh, the question is asking us to identify incorrectly matched ore deposit to the type area. Okay, so as you may know, gold mineralization at Hoti is associated with quartz veins and hydrothermal alteration formed during a brittle ductile deformation episode. It is not a pleasure gold deposit. Hence, option A is the right answer. The question is asking us to match the geological provinces with their respective mineral or ore deposits. As uh, we have also discussed, the Mansur formation of saucer group is rich in, uh, rich in manganese deposits. Hati is a part of Dharwar supergroup, super group, which is rich in gold deposits. Khetri is a part of North Delhi fold belt, which is famous for its copper deposits. And, and the Chhatrapur Odisha contains good deposits of beach pleasures. Hence, option B will be the right answer. Now the next set of questions are from hydrogeology. The question is asking what is the average drawdown of over 150 square kilometer area where 30 million cubic meter of water is pumped through a number of uniformly distributed wells and the specific yield is given 25%. Uh, 
as you know specific yield is the amount of water that is actually available for groundwater pumping when sediments or rocks are drained so to calculate the average drawdown of an area the equation will be area multiplied by height and specific yield will be equal to the volume of water pumped since the question has options in meter we have to convert the area into meter square also the specific yield must be put in decimal terms and solving for the equation for the um, h that is the average drawdown you want to calculate you will find the answer to be 0 0.8 meter which one of the following statement is correct about thickness of the capillary zone um, okay, so from the statement, the question here is asking us to find out the correct relationship between the thickness of the cap capillary zone with the pore size of the soil. As you can see from this figure, the capillary zone or the fringe, capillary fringe, lies directly above the water table and contains water drawn up by capillary action from the zone of saturation. So, in general, the thickness of the capillary fringe varies inversely with the size of the interstices, that is, the pores. In clean gravel, the capillary fringe uh, almost disappears. In silt and or clay, the fringe may be uh, several feet thick. Hence, option C is the correct statement. Uh, if uh, rho m is the density of mineral particle and rho d is the um, bulk density, then the porosity alpha of rock can be expressed as which of the following expressions so the porosity can be expressed as 1 minus bulk density by particle density solving for the equation you will get option d as your correct expression <coughs> uh, next question as which one of the following is the unit of transmissivity uh, the equation of uh, transmissivity is given as T equals to Q divided by um, W into del H by del L. Uh, T is your transmissivity, Q is the volume of uh, uh, volume rate of the water which is expressed in meter cube per day and the saturated thickness that is W is expressed as uh, meter and hydraulic gradient that is del H by del L is unitless. So the correct answer will be option B that is meter square per day. Next question asks which one of the following statement is correct regarding applicability of Darcy's law. A Darcy's law is applicable for turbulent flow in any medium. Darcy's law is applicable for lamellar flow in a saturated porous medium. A Darcy's law is applicable for both turbulent and lamellar flows in any medium. Darcy's law is applicable for any type of flow in any medium. So uh, it has been observed that uh, Darcy's law is valid for Reynolds number less than one that is for the laminar flow and is the most fundamental equation describing water flow in saturated porous media. So option B here will be the right answer. <coughs> uh, if grains in an aquifer material have same sorting, packing and fabric then uh, one of the following relationship is correct about the expected hydraulic conductivity of the aquifer material uh, okay so hydraulic conductivity refers to aquifer's ability to transmit or conduct water and is a function of the porous media and the fluid passing through passing through it for example gravel gravel has larger grain hence it is more porous and has more ability to transmit water so the correct sequence will be option a that is gravel then sand then silt this is the um, expression for the um, K that is the hydraulic conductivity. The Reynolds number of a fluid in a conduit is 12. If the uh, velocity of a flow is increased twice and the diameter of the conduit is reduced to one third, what will be the new Reynolds number? The Reynolds equation is uh, given by um, uh, rho pd divided by mu. The question has given you the initial uh, array that is 12 and asking you to calculate the new one if the volume becomes 2v and the d becomes d by 3. So if you solve the equation you will find the new array to be 8. So option c is the right answer here. In a groundwater sample, the concentration of uh, calcium and magnesium are uh, 100 ppm and, the, and 50 ppm respectively. What is the total hardness of, of this groundwater sample? Okay, so hard, hardness is primarily caused by the dissolved mineral 
compounds that is calcium and magnesium hardness is calculated from the equation um, 2.497 uh, into calcium concentration plus 4.118 into magnesium concentration if you put the amount of calcium and magnesium given in the question and solve it your answer will come 455 ppm so option d is the right answer <coughs> In a groundwater sample, the concentration of uh, uh, sodium, calcium and magnesium are 15, 12 and 6 equivalent per million respectively. What is the sodium absorption ratio or SAR value uh, of this groundwater sample? The SAR uh, value or uh, the sodium absorption ratio is given by sodium divided by square root of half of the sum of uh, calcium and magnesium concentration. So putting the concentrations from the questions, you will find the SAR value to be 5. <clears throat> the disease uh, methemoglobinemia methemoglobinemia uh, in infants is caused uh, due to excessive concentration of which one of the following constituents in water chloride iron uh, fluoride and nitrate okay so intake of water contaminated with nitrates can cause the blue baby syndrome or methemoglobinemia methemoglobin affects the blood's ability to deliver oxygen to cells and that's why this blue baby syndrome is fatal for infants so the correct answer is d artificial uh, recharging of groundwater is generally done by digging pits or shafts in areas where the previous formations are at shallow depth uh, impermeable at all depths at uh, greater depth or absent Okay, so in areas uh, where the uh, previous formations are greater depth, the yeah. artificial recharge through the recharge shafts and pits can be constructed in two different ways that is vertical and lateral. Vertical uh, shafts are usually ideal, ideally suited for deep water levels. Option D is the right answer here that is the previous layers should be at greater depth. <laughs> the next and the last question asks the general range of weights of ditch in ditch and furrow method uh, of artificial recharge of groundwater is how much okay so in areas with uh, regular topography closely spaced ditches or furrows provide maximum water contact area for recharge water from sources uh, from source, source stream or canal this technique requires cell, uh, less soil preparation than the recharge basins and is less sensitive to silting ditches should be shallow flat bottomed and closely spaced to obtain maximum water contact area so the and the typical width is from uh, a width of 0 0.3 to 1.8 is taken hence option b that is 0 0.3 to 1.8 meter will be the right answer here with that we have covered the entire upsc geoscientist 2022 prelims geology paper we will come up with more such explanation videos soon to aid your preparation if you want to test your concepts regularly, please consider joining our Combined Geoscientist 2023 Prelims Test Series, which is now live. More information can be found in the description box and on our website. Thank you again and see you in the next video.